Hello everyone. Shall I start? No, no. Uh, wait. Uh, could you please like uh, turn off your mic first? Like we'll we'll give an introduction speech, then you can start. Okay. Madam will let you introduce, right? Okay, sure. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Am I audible, everyone? Okay, wishing yes. one and all present over here a warm and hearty welcome uh, from the behalf of Pigeon Institute of Medical Sciences. A very good morning. Thank you for joining us today. We are really, very excited to have you all here. This is be an opportunity for us to learn each other and grow together. For those who don't know me, this is Shamilip Sinarai. I'm the Associate Professor of Pigeon Institute of Medical Sciences. I will be your moderator for today. Now I'd like to introduce our Principal Madam of Pigeon Institute of Medical Sciences, Professor Dr. Shubhana Ganguly. I request Madam to say some few words. Thank you. Madam. We can't hear you actually, ma'am. Hello, am I audible, everyone? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Very good morning, everyone. Today we have gathered uh, for the first time to have a webinar for the students. Uh, career development. So as we all know that uh, now we are going to have our first session, which will be about the prospects of pharmacists job uh, in UK and US. And we have arranged uh, two speakers uh, from different background to provide us with good knowledge about the scope and uh, scope of pharmacy and the future prospects because our students uh, they are limited with their 
studies only they are all the time busy with their studies so they are not getting exposure with the outside world so here uh, our attempt is there to make them aware about the possible opportunities which they will get in uh, foreign land and also in india not only that in what way they can contribute to the society after doing this course so let us uh, have our first lecture uh, by our eminent speaker mr shourav pal thank you hello everyone i hope all of you are fine and doing well i am uh, thora pal actually i have uh, completed my b pharma from from uh, uh, bengal then i have worked in the biocon bangalore then i have worked for for one hyderabad based mnc company and that plant was us fd approval then then i have a question for my path then i thought that i uh, then i thought thought i have to pursue my uh, further education to to abroad uh, then i then i uh, prepared for it and currently i am pursuing my ms at uh, like northeastern university boston currently i am in boston so i will be guiding you so how to pursue your ms or phd in the uh, phd in america so and all of you uh, if anyone have any question or any kind of doubt please ask me in the chat box <laughs> to pursue your ms or phd you have to complete your b pharma then you have to take your uh, uh, take your uh, uh, various kind of kind of exam like Uh, GRE, TOEFL, uh, Duolingo, and uh, Duolingo, and that IELTS exam. <coughs> uh, basically, I have uh, given my uh, TOEFL and my dual uh, Duolingo exam, and I have prepared for my uh, GRE exam, but I did not uh, take that uh, GRE exam. because i was planning to apply for that ms in like a uh, ms in ra so i was about to choose few few <laughs> universities uh, so my first of all my choice was like university of southern uh, uh, california then that was like then after that uh, northeastern university boston and then uh, sent sent uh, 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 cloud university in that in that minneapolis and that university of florida and and one another uh, university that is uh, 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 is like lu uh, brooklyn so i have uh, taken my uh, taken my exam then i have then i have applied for it uh, uh, to that particular website uh, particular website or um, particular website of that college and that university then after a uh, few months i got an admission so so how to prepare for the 
for the exam to prepare for your exam uh, prepare for your exam uh, first of all uh, you have to purchase few books and uh, then you can also follow that youtube videos uh, actually i have uh, prepared the exams uh, uh, from that youtube videos also and and there are so many videos in videos on that uh, uh, youtube you can just uh, search there then the, then then i have scored my uh, uh, then 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 i got a good score in like uh, 12 l in that dual pingo exam so in this process you need to a uh, new feed new few uh, types of papers uh, so you need that your personal uh, statement that personal statement means uh, so your personal statement will be only two pages and it will be under like 1000 words the the main purpose of your personal statement will be uh, what's your choice or or why you uh, 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 want to pursue your career in the states or in canada or in the uk so i so actually i have spent like 5 uh, to 8 months just on the personal statement then then actually i have completed my b pharma from that uh, calcutta institute of pharmaceutical technology and allied health sciences and it is based in that uh, based in based in that that howra i have completed my completed my b pharma in the year of 2000 and uh, 16 and so so in that fourth Sorry, in that uh, uh, sorry, from that very first year, I have my my pursue pursue of my dream uh, was to like how to go go abroad and how to and how to and how to upskill uh, yourself. So so guys, uh, do you have any doubt? Or I could excuse uh, me, sir. Yes, sir. Please, uh, please continue. Saroj, if you wanted to ask something, just ask. Excuse me, sir. Yes, please. Sir, the last part uh, which you mentioned about the Canada and the UK. can you repeat once more sir so for that uk you can apply uh, so you can apply apply with the same process for that uk you need that ielts exam ielts academic and for that uh, canada you need only ielts exam because that country don't allow any other exam other than ielts uh, other than ielts that 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 academic one so you need that particular particular exam and that ielts band will be like uh, band will be like uh, a, a 7.5 at least and and in that and in the earlier time it was like if you get that uh, below uh, uh, below uh, no, no. 7.5 then 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 you have to appear for that entire exam again and and currently uh, currently if you get like uh, below uh, 7.5 then then you can particularly uh, particularly uh, 
they particularly appear for that uh, for uh, particularly apply for for that part only where you got a very bit score okay thank you sir yes sir and anyone else anyone from the participant would like to ask him anything sir yes you uh, can i get full fund this scholarship in south korea uh, actually i don't have any kind of experience in that particular country because i was because i was um, uh, focused on that uk and that canada and that america only uh, i hope you understand thank you okay sir okay. so currently i am back to my uh, back to my speech so actually i have started my process in the year 2000 and like 19 after completing few few industrial experience because to pursue pursue this course i need experience also and uh, so i have started my Uh, journey in uh, pro- from october 2019 then i have prepared like like uh, all the scp and that and that all kind of uh, uh, lor and i am th- and and i am th- thankful to uh, dr uh, subarna ganguli and and uh, she has uh, po- uh, uh, provided me an lor to pursue my dream i appreciate her help thank you so much ma'am uh, so back to my speech actually i was applying for few 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 universities and uh, and i was uh, taking exam and by that time it was like that p- p- pandemic time so so anyone can't go outside of their home uh, so in that particular time i have uh, so uh, so in that particular time i took my exams um, uh, uh, from my home and i have taken that uh, taken that toefl and that duolingo exam and 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 it was a, a very very hard process actually actually it was uh, not a very easy process then my uh, then i got uh, uh, then i got uh, uh, three admits means that admission and one is uh, like uh, like at northeastern university boston and uh, currently i am pursuing my pursuing my ms there and another one is uh, like massachusetts college of pharmacy and and health sciences and that uh, coursework uh, coursework and the variety of courses are too good in that any boston so i have pursued as as so i think about that Uh, i should uh, go to that particular particular university so if you uh, come to this uh, come to this uh, country so then then you can uh, pursue your study and, and after completing your study you can you can work also uh, and that america is a, a very good country to pursue your study and your dream so your course is like 2 years and post completion your course you can work for like at 3 uh, another years 
as uh, to uh, work in this country your course should be should be under a stem course the full form of the stem is science technology and that engineering and that mathem and that and that uh, mathematics and and in the gre exam you have to uh, take that exam with that mathematics and that and that english also Uh, so actually, I was applying for fall two thousand and uh, fall two thousand and and twenty twenty one, and I and I did not get my visa unfortunately. And then I have come to this country just after just after a year, and my visa has been approved. in like us embassy new uh, uh, see in this and uh, in this us uh, in this us embassy new uh, the uh, delhi uh, thank you so much uh, see i guess i need a uh, I guess I need the five-minute break. After that break, I will be back. Okay, sure. Madam, can I call upon our next? uh like next speaker uh, excuse me samu sir uh, i think next speaker slot will be from 10:15 10:30 okay okay so what you going to do like uh, like for 5 minutes we're going to skip if anybody having any question then okay. he or she may be put in the chat box okay, uh. okay.
hello everyone i am back so i can see few question like many couple by the poddar have asked me sorry i am uh, starting from that uh, sam sundar banaji good morning sir and madam thank you sir can i join full funded scholarship sir can i get full funded scholarship yes uh, yes actually yes you can get and if your uh, percentage or uh, percentage and that uh, and that your uh, previous educational background and that gre tofl score is very very excellent then you can get get your uh, scholarship uh, for that ms program and for that phd program it is almost fully uh, funded actually few of my few of my friends who are uh, studying studying uh, with me in that b pharma they are getting fully funded uh, scholarship and they are they and they have all and they have completed their uh, phd and and they have entered into that uh, and uh, they have uh, uh, they have entered into that uh, 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 post uh, a post uh, doctoral program also <coughs> and few of them uh, few of them have joined joined join the industry like johnson and johnson and that and that abbott and that uh, pfizer also thank you and that santanu bhaduri sir how can i get fully funded scholarship in south korea bro uh, uh, thank you so much for your question but i am not the uh, perfect person to to say something something about that particular country because i don't have don't have that any kind of expertise in the for that particular country you can uh, uh, you can check check it online because if i say something uh, uh, wrong then then it will be then then it will be a very big issue thank you and after antonu uh, sajal mondol has asked sir you can get get a proper information about scholarship and the expenses of the study yes thank you for your question and and yes it's a, a very uh, and it's a very a good question so coming back to the question and see uh, yes uh, and my uh, current course uh, fees is like 36400 and it uh, became uh, and currently it's 37800 for this fall and and it has increased by uh, by by all by almost uh, one lakh and and that course uh, that course i am currently pursuing is is that expenses is is about is about almost like a, like a, a 28 lakh for this particular course you can get a very um, you can get a bank loan and and you can get that uh, prodigy finance loan and that empowered finance and they don't need any kind of uh, property papers uh, from you or from you or your parents they will send the amount uh, to your college or that university and that living expenses they can they can fund you but my personal uh, but but particularly uh, to me uh, i am uh, doing it by my own and that uh, so currently my my like monthly expenses are like uh, uh, variable sometimes 
sometimes it goes about uh, 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 800 uh, USD and sometimes it's uh, 750 uh, uh, USD and 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 currently I'm in Boston and it's uh, and Boston is very very expensive place to to stay and if you and if you move to other place uh, and like that that Indiana or uh, uh, that Indiana state then then that expenses will be very less like in that uh, in that uh, uh, 350 uh, uh, USD, you will get a full room, and and about and about everything, and and it will come under uh, 500 uh, USD per month. So so basically, you can get uh, get bank loan of that, and and you can get the bank loan uh, uh, from the NBFC uh, Stanford that. Uh, like non uh, banking financial uh, 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 corporation like that uh, uh, 4G finance or that uh, or that empower finance so uh, so I have one friend and who is a very big youtuber himself UDJ and you can and and uh, you can ping him on that Instagram, uh, and you can add, and you can mention my name, as as he is a very good friend of me. He will uh, he will say everything, and and particularly he is on YouTube too. He came in this country in in uh, 2014, and currently. He, he is uh, he is uh, doing his everything good. Just just you have to do do that. Uh, just go to go to that Instagram or in that YouTube and just search that UDJ. If you don't uh, mention that UDJ on YouTube. Scholarship you uh, and then yeah. Ananda Din has asked me Posan Kumar. Okay, uh, Posan, just finish my question and that answer, then I will come to you. Thank you, bro. And then Ananda Dinda has asked me, do you get extra research project opportunity in one country? Actually, your uh, and you can do your extra paper paper if you pursue your phd for that for that ms and that opportunity is very less and that phd uh, uh, you can do 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 everything for that phd you can apply uh, uh, you can apply with that uh, b pharma b pharma only then that course will be like uh, uh, five years, and after five years, uh, uh, you could get your PhD or it could be extended. Then uh, Sajal Mundal, sir, can you get a proper information about scholarship and an expensive for the study? Uh, thank you, Sajal, uh, and I have already uh, uh, covered that question. There is it okay? Apply myself for the consultancy. Yes, the biggest part is like you can ping me for the particular question on my uh, uh, particular question 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 on my Instagram. And actually, I have applied to all kind of universities by my own. And and I have prepared my exams by my own, and no another 
or that external consultancy did not help me and i and i and i, I did not Seek any kind of help from any consultancy because that consultancy charge will be uh, very big. Uh, it could go around like, uh, and few of my friends have gone through that consultancy, and their charges was like uh, insane, and their ch charges was like uh, forty to forty-five thousand. And in some cases, it, it could be 5,000 5, INR or that 8,000 INR. Thank you. Emmanuel, can you guide your students regarding how they will avail the scholarship? Yes, Mr. Nilanjan Adhikari, sir, thank you for, for your question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, based, based on the profile of the uh, student, they can get their. Uh, a scholarship uh, when a student is is applying for that particular college or the uh, or the uh, college of the sorry particular college then then the particular college will, will offer you that uh, a scholarship if your if your uh, uh, profile is uh, very good or or very very excellent for uh, for your uh, for the scholarship, at least you need that point of like minimum point of eight point five, and that very good score in that at uh, uh, TOEFL, GRE, and that Duolingo exam. Uh, what is the process to get a job in uh, Switzerland? Actually, it's a very uh, good country, and I don't have any kind of experience in that European. Uh, country actually i don't have that that kind of uh, that kind of expertise uh, i guess you can do it online to get job in that european union uh, uh, I guess you have to pursue the pursue the education, or you can go for the job. And one guy has raised his hand. Can you please uh, tell why pharmacy profession is a, is most valuable in foreign country than India? Thank you, Anand uh, Dinda. It's a very good question. Actually, the price of the particular tablet drugs, uh, drugs particularly, is approved based on that US, uh, based on that uh, uh, US FDA. Currently, I am pursuing my course that is completely, completely uh, with that US FDA. And my course curriculum is uh, is uh, is all is uh, all about that uh, 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 that FDA. Uh, if a particular drug product uh, 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 come come into that into that pharma uh, market, then that particular drug has to go through that phase one, phase two, phase three, then the, the drug has to pass pass that approval, then then they have to pass that phase four or that post market phase. And that all that process is very, very expensive and it comes under that, uh, comes under like uh, millions of USD in the state. So the price of the price of the uh, medicine is uh, very very high in the states and the uh, and the person who are currently in the production area they are they are also getting paid uh, uh, like one of my senior from my college he have uh, uh, 
completed his B pharma. Mr. Uh, can I interrupt yes. you, Mr. Shorok? I yes, think the uh, I, I think the question is something different. Like uh, 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 that Anondo, that person Anondo Dinda asked, like why pharmacy profession is most valuable in foreign countries, like rather than India. Like why do you choose yes, yes, the yes. pharmacy profession abroad? Like why not in India? That's the question. Yes, yes. Thank you. That pharmacy profession is very, very valuable, but I am. But I can say that in that country, India, pharmacists are pharmacists are uh, like underpaid, and being see, I am also a, a, a pharmacist, and and their approval process is that expensive, and the and that uh, particular like medicines are are also expensive. Then the company is paying very good amount uh, to the pharma employee, and in the country like India, their uh, uh, person who are in production or in the QC or or in the any other de department, they are like they they are not uh, they are. Pay, they are uh, paid, but compared to the to the foreign country, they are uh, getting a very a bit amount, like little bit amount. So, uh, so I guess India, India, India will India will improve if a pharma industry and in the future, I guess, and I hope, uh, and I hope that in in the future india uh, uh, india will be a very good place for the pharmacist but uh, to my personal experience compared to the india and in the foreign country and in the foreign country uh, pharmacists are uh, getting paid very good amount uh, and to the and and it, and in terms of the profession, pharmacists are doing very good, uh, good in the uh, India and in the foreign country. And again, in the same point, they are doing the same, same kind, same uh, hard work, but they are not getting paid very good amount in that India, but they are getting very. A very good good amount in that foreign country but uh, sir i guess uh, it's uh, uh, it's very 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 hard to to accept that but it but but it's a, a fact and one more question in my question uh, thank you one question from my side what do you prefer ms mba which will be career opportunities for our students and and in terms of that ms or that uh, uh, or that or that mba uh, so i can say, i can uh, say that to pursue, pursue the, uh, uh, pursue the uh, like MBA or the uh, MF, it's a very hard work to achieve, to to achieve a very good college. But after finishing your degree, uh, finishing the degree every students the and his purpose is to uh, get a job or get a job and and he has to pay off his uh, bank loan so so in that ms in the uh, so for the ms in in america 
uh, um, so in that america uh, they can work for three years and after uh, and if any student pursue pursue a uh, pursue an MBA in the state and first of all MBA is a very very expensive than the MS and it comes around uh, comes around almost as uh, uh, it comes comes around almost uh, like 80 lakh and INR so so MBA is a very expensive and few university offer uh, uh, three years permit for for their uh, uh, profession and if anyone get that uh, three years universe uh, sorry uh, a three years permit to uh, uh, to explore his skills and it completely de depends on the particular university and few few other few other colleges and that and that uh, to other colleges is is also is also uh, offering uh, just only a single year permit to to explore your uh, skills so i will be uh, so my side uh, opinion uh, to prefer to prefer the ms uh, prefer the ms only because uh, being a pharma background uh, you can pursue the both actually but 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 uh, but if you ask me as a uh, person then i can say that you can go for the ms only thank you uh, so modi singh doi has uh, yes mr yes mr shorapal i just wanted to ask you one more thing that is like uh, could you please tell our student like uh, why regulatory affairs and uh, drugs Biologics and medical device is important for studying okay, MS. Sure. That will be yes. very good, right? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. So, Modi Singh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, thank you for your question. And to pass, to pass any kind of capsule or the tablet, uh, tablet, any kind, any kind of uh, pharma product in. Or any kind of like uh, medical uh, uh, medical equipment, the the uh, the product has to be approved by uh, approved by FDA and the uh, uh, European Union also, and and there are few uh, few other RA agencies that they are in that there, but the two main is like FDA and that European. Uh, uh, union. If any, uh, if the FDA approves, then it consider that that product is highly valuable in uh, highly valuable and and anyone can accept it. Uh, so FDA approval uh, is like mandatory fact means. It, it has to approve to get an approval from that FDA. A pharma company needs to file that NDA, like NDA, and uh, and it's a different question. And for that medicine, and for that medical equipment or any kind of biopharma product, and um, means that means that insulin and for that uh, medical equipment like press maker uh, uh, they are very highly uh, they are very highly effective and that fda uh, see in that um, see, see in this uh, america it comes under like uh, uh, 21 cfr uh, to be approved and and any student pursue that uh, course then th they can get the job in like various pharma company and that well-known pharma companies like Johnson and Johnson Pfizer and the robot and all and they can achieve a good 
uh, and they can they can achieve something good when they will be back in their home country hello yes hello uh, mr yes yes. Mr. yes yes okay uh, i have one query uh, yes. regarding the uh, your uh, career opportunistics uh, subject i mean to say after completion of b farm uh, for uh, for the graduation now what will be the scope for the pharmacy student in abroad See, now, which course you you want prefer uh, okay thank you thank you for your question uh, so my personal so my personal personal opinion is and uh, see uh, uh, there are various various course to pursue uh, for the for the ms like pharma pharma pharmaceutical sciences that comes under that ms also and that ms in ra also and and various other courses are there and personally i don't like that production area so so if anyone can pursue that uh, pursue that ms in uh, pharmaceutical sciences then they then they have to go to the production area production area and and it's pretty hard work actually i have been into like uh, various uh, various mnc earlier so my personal opinion is to pursue pursue the ms into ra and 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 particularly to come under the college and that university like northeastern university is uh, boston is is offering five different concentration like ms uh, in regulatory affairs in uh, like a, a clinical part and that non clinical part and that and that so, sorry to interrupt part. you sir sir hello yes am yes. i audible yes yes, yes. so uh, one more query sir is there any entrance examinations for this uh, obtaining this course yes actually i have yes actually i have uh, mentioned this earlier uh, 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 for applying this course you have to uh, uh, you have to get a very good score in the tofl gre and that dual uh, and and tofl gre and that ielts and, and in the dueling also as uh, so actually i have taken the test to fl and the dual and uh, lingo both and i have came to this country just 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 before 8 months uh, and everything is good in this country and and my current concentration is uh, uh, on biopharmaceutical so uh, so my personal personal opinion is like something different and any other, and any another student will will pursue pursue on like a, a different course and 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 it's up to them so is there any a few more question and that's my instagram account link and and if you have any another question then you can then you can ask me on that instagram is anybody having any questions you may drop on chat box <laughs> yes students if you are having any queries regarding your career prospects uh, for uh, pursuing any course in abroad then you may ask our speaker samudip sir 
and I have pinned my Instagram, ping my Instagram ID. And if you have any another question, then then you can ask me on my on my Instagram ID. Uh, and one more thing, sir, is he supposed to uh, give the, his Instagram ID if anybody yeah. having any query regarding the higher studies as well as the career opportunity courses for pursuing in abroad, then you are you can uh, message me. I think Samosa, uh, please uh, call the madam. Samosa. Samosa, are you there? Hello. Yes. Hello, yes. <coughs> yes. Ma'am, can you hear me? And few uh, and few other point I have to like uh, mention in this uh, and, and mention to pursue about uh, your father father education uh, uh, pupil and the and the student uh, if uh, who are who are interested to pursue your education in the state then they have to maintain as like minimum a 3.0 gpa uh, gpa on the 4.0 scale and people uh, and people and mr as hajel has have every hand and and uh, and please ask me Please ask me. Sir, would you speak, would you speak about monthly expenses and part-time in the USA or another country? Sorry? Sorry, I can't. Sorry, I can't hear you. Sir, would you speak about monthly expense and the part-time income pathway in USA or another country? Yes, 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 sure, 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 sure. Uh, sure, I will. Uh, thank you so much for your question. Please mute you. Please mute yourself. Uh, so actually. Uh, uh, so I'm coming back to my uh, uh, previous point. People, people have to, people have to do something good in their academics, and and if anyone is planning to cheat or like uh, cheat from from any uh, from uh, from other friends, please do not do that. Uh, cheat in the cheat cheat in the exam, uh, and if you get caught in the uh, in uh, in the foreign college or that university then then you have to go back to your home country this this point is particularly to the as uh, to the guys if anyone is planning to do something something illegally in their uh, something Anything, anything illegally then and few of my friends has been back to my uh, back to their home country because they have been caught uh, doing something kind of illegal stuff like okay thank and, you thank you thank you thank you Saurabh. thank you Saurabh Pal, for your valuable speech and sir i have to give sir i have to give uh, something another information Okay, 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 sure, sure, sure. Just five minutes. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Because our, uh, like, another, uh, another yes, speaker is also there. Okay, sure, sure, sure. Just five take minutes. Take your time, please. Please, please, uh, take your time. Uh, please, please allow me. Thank you. And if, and if anyone is planning to do the, do the, uh, do the on-campus job, and yes, uh, various on, 
PDF, PDF off campus job is available in a particular uh, particularly uh, particularly in your college and the and the college uh, and you can have your income and if you get any get any on campus job uh, like that as a as a assistant of uh, as a assistant of any professor or in the uh, coffee shop and and they and by that time you will be paid uh, paid at least uh, 15 to like a 25 usd per per hour and it's a per a per hourly basis and and you can do your income uh, 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 while pursuing your studies. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Subarna Ganguly, for your support. And, and everyone, thank you so much. I appreciate your, your help. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Shora, for your valuable speech. I hope our students will be get benefited with your speech. Now I'd like to request our principal, madam, to uh, share a few words about our, uh, about our next speaker. Ma'am, can you hear me? Hello. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, now we are going to have our next part of uh, lecture, which will be given by uh, Mr. Sachin Yadav, sir. Sir is going to explore the different uh, aspects of the competitive exams, GPAT, NIPAD exams, exams related to drug inspector post, etc. Sir is having much experience in dealing with all such uh, preparations related to such other competitive exams. We, and this sort of lecture is useful for our students because uh, as we know that we are busy with our preparation for our semester exams, our annual examinations. All the students in colleges, they are busy with the same. But for GPAT, for NIPER, for getting prepared for various competitive examinations or for drug inspector exam, we need something more. Uh, there arises one hair difference in the answers. Uh, so a natural student, regular student will become confused in dealing with such objective type questions. People get uh, confused in dealing with the answer, which will be right. It becomes like a one hair difference. So, uh, so this platform will help us to know how to prepare for the exams and how to deal with all the pressures and what are the opportunities available for the students. Thank you. Okay, now I'd, leave, now I'd like to request Mr. Shachin Yadav to start with his speech. Thank you. Am I audible, you sir? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. First of all, I would, I'm grateful to our Honorable Principal, Dr. Shubarna Ganguly, Madam, and Somadip Singh, sir, Nilanjan Adhikari, sir, and all the staff members for uh, making available this uh, wonderful platform for the students' career. Thank you very much, madam, and all the staff members, first of all. And today, for the, all the students, we are going to discuss about the preparation strategy. Preparation strategies for GPAT, NIPER, the inspector and government pharmacist exam. So I am going to clear your each and every single doubt about the GPAT preparation about the NIPER preparation, about the drug inspector, government, pharmacist, etc. Et so, are you able to see my screen? Please let me know once. Are you able to see the screen, sir? 
Yes, yes. We can we can see the slide set. Okay. So we are going to see this part first. How to how to sir, sir can you slide. can you pin pin your slide? Pin your screen. It will be better for our students. Pin means I'm not able to understand. Sir, actually, Lanjan sir was like, uh, you have to pin your slide. Lanjan sir is saying to pin your slide. Pin you just pin your slide. I'm not understanding that. Uh, how to pin? Uh, you have to pin up your slide. Like, uh, you just click uh, over the like. Okay, it's fine, fine, it's fine. Like, everyone can see it. If you pin it up, then it will goes up. Like. No, it's fine. Sir, please continue. Yeah. So, yeah. we are going to see how to prepare for GPAT, NIPER, Drug Inspector, Government Pharmacist exam. So, in the, now this, uh, this, this will be discussed in the different parts. So, in the, in the part, in the part one, we'll see how to start the GPAT preparation, how to uh, study how to prepare okay so uh, most of the students they might be from second year be from third year be from fourth year be from right so for uh, second year be from third year be from i'm going to explain this how to start the preparation and for final year be from it will be a very nice revision so i think let's start so welcome all gpat niper 2023-24 aspirants so for second year students and third year students, so initial slides will be an induction part and later on the main core of this uh, session will be started. So first, what is meant by GPAD? So you might know GPAD is nothing but the kind of entrance exam. After you become, you have to write this exam. When you are in a become fourth year, you have to write this exam. If you want to do your master's like MSc, MPOM, MTA, etc., etc. So for master courses, you have to write this exam. So you can say this is a test to evaluate your graduation in the pharmacy. Or you can say it is a reflection of your competency in the pharmacy field. So whether you are competent or not, that will be reflected in the GPAT scorecard. You can say it is a gateway for master and master and doctor courses. It is a gateway for master's and doctor the courses. Now, earlier this exam was conducted by Maharaja Sahajirao University Padda before 2010. After that it was shifted to AICT and from last few years it is being conducted by National Testing Agency. Right. So <clears throat> who are eligible to write this exam? This is the one of the most frequently asked questions from the student side that sir I am in the second year, I am in the third year and uh, whether I can write GPAD exam or not, whether I am eligible or not. So basically, as per the NTA notification, they have mentioned the criteria that become fourth year students can apply for this exam. But there is a one loophole in the application process. So as most of the BPAM final year students, they have not results in their hand. So they have given one option over there. So you can apply as a appeared. In a BPOM. So that is a loophole, and that's why third year students can also apply for the GPAD exam. Second year students also can apply for the GPAD exam because appeared means what? Appeared means you are appeared in the BPOM, you are appeared in the final year. Okay, so third year students can also write this GPAD exam for practice purpose. Okay, and BPOM fourth year students are eligible officially for this GPAD exam. Okay, so if you want to write this exam for practice purpose, you can write when you are in a second year, when you are in a third year, doesn't matter. But, okay, officially, before fourth year students are there eligible, right? We'll see the next, what are the importance of this exam? If you don't know the importance, if you don't know the benefits of this exam, you cannot plan your study perfectly, you cannot manage your study perfectly, you cannot have that thrust about the study, okay? So basically, what is the importance of this exam? So for post-graduation like MS, MPOM, and MTech, MS means uh, Master of Science, okay? Master of, MS means Master of Science in the pharmaceuticals. 
then m m tech is there then m pharm is there so obviously in the rest of india you are going to get m pharm as a post graduation degree but if you get admission in the naipur so they offer sir three kind of degrees post graduate degrees so ms pharma then m tech then mba pharma mba okay so ms pharma m tech pharma mba and m pharm so these are the courses available at the naipur institutes okay but rest of the india you will get only m pharm master of pharmacy again this gpat exam is very very important for phd if you want to do your doctorate if you want to do your phd in the pharmaceutical sciences if you want to work as a government uh, research fellow or a government fellowship junior junior research fellow this exam is very very important again this exam is not only important for your post graduation studies this exam is not only important for your doctoral studies but also for your jobs nowadays this exam is also important for your jobs because there are a lot of you know that there are a lot of colleges they are opening year by year and uh, because of that lot of bpharm students they are passing year by year okay so there is absolute disturbance in the demand and supply so supply is a huge demand is a very less so that that's why jobs are really limited okay and lot of students they are passing year by year okay so you have to cope up with the situation you have to face that situation you have to survive in the competition right so to survive in the competition you need some additional points and suppose you are gpat qualified that means you have some additional points in your cv or in your resume so qualification of gpat is not only for master courses and not only for other studies it is also important for jobs nowadays okay for private jobs government jobs there are certain multinational companies which are now selecting which are now recruiting only gpat qualified candidates or you can say they are giving preference to the gpat qualified candidates right now for government jobs also if you are gpat qualified so that study is definitely helping you for government exam right now what is the main benefit of this exam so that is nothing but the financial benefit okay if you are gpat qualified government will give you stipend of 12.4000 per month for two years okay suppose you are gpat qualified and you want to get admission in the master you are going to get a stipend of 12.4000 per month now so that is given for two years now what will be the amount of stipend so it is around 3 lakhs rupees so 12.4 into 24 months so it is around 3 lakhs rupees now suppose that you got a gpat qualification you got a very good score in the GPAT. gpat exam colleges okay so what is the fees in the government colleges it is very less okay in the for example say example maharashtra government college of maharashtra so it will have only 35000 per year okay in the government college of maharashtra the fees for master cm pharmacy is nothing but 35000 there are certain departments so where also there is only 16000 like nagpur department of pharmaceutical sciences so there is only 16000 annual fees for cm pharm right so you can say you are going to get 3 lakhs of rupees as in the form of stipend and uh, your uh, expense of 2 years will be only 70000 so 2.3 lakhs you will be in a profit now you can have 2.3 lakhs rupees in your hand okay your masters will be free of cost okay there will be no burden on your parents regarding the fees of your masters right so your masters is going to be you are uh, doing your masters free of cost because every thing is covered in the stipend as well as you are going to get some surplus money now you can buy very much nice bike very much nice scooty or any laptop you can buy anything with that surplus money right so that is the main benefit at least for financial benefit you should think about this exam you have to write this exam you have to study for this exam right most of the students nowadays they are uh, just busy in their own lives they are just busy in the their mobiles and laptops and all but you have to outside this is also over you have to come out of the box you have to come out from your frame right so you have to study if you are away, if you are if you are having knowledge if you are having skills so that knowledge that skill is definitely going to help you in your future career so if you don't have knowledge if you don't have skills then nobody is there to entertain you so nobody is going to entertain you 
unless you have some sort of knowledge of your pharmacy some sort of skills regarding the pharmacy right again you will be preferred in the industry again you will be preferred in the academics okay as i told you there are certain private colleges there are certain private institutions they also have started selecting only gpat qualified candidates as a assistant professor so again for jobs you need a gpat now gpat preparation or gpat qualification is not only for your higher studies so this preparation and this study what do you mean by gpat preparation so gpat preparation <coughs> Preparation means you are revising your BPharm study thoroughly. So whatever syllabus of your BPharm, you are revising that syllabus thoroughly. And that is for GPAT study. Right? Now this study is definitely going to help you for other exams. There are a lot of exams that will come in you, into your life because life is a full of exams, right? Your life is a full of exams. Even to survive normally, you need to there's a lot of situation you your exam is there everywhere okay so if you prepare gpat well if you revise your bpharm syllabus thoroughly so that syllabus that preparation that study is definitely going to help you for niper exam drug inspector exam government pharmacist exam government analyst exam because these are the various pharma competitive exams after your bpharm if you want to work in the government uh, government sector so obviously there are a lot of vacancies of government pharmacies uh, recently also there are a lot of uh, there are uh, vacancies of government drug inspector government analyst government lecturership okay, government professors so if you have prepared gpat well then there is no need to prepare separately okay now you have enough time you are in your b farm you are in a your peak level okay you are energetic you are you are having all the time now what you have to you have to utilize that time if you are ready to study at least six hours now then if you are not ready to study six hours now then be ready to do donkey work in your future okay so you have to decide choice is your whether you have to you have to study six hours or five hours today or whether you have to work 12 hours in future so that depends on you that's why you have to you should be clear regarding that GPAT exam. You have to clear this exam. Okay. So again, you will be this study will help you for other exams like NIPOR DI, government analyst, government pharmacy, etc. Okay. Now how to apply what is the pattern? Most of the students they might know what is the pattern of GPAT, how to apply for GPAT. So as a formality, I have to tell you application forms they are announced in the November, December month of every year. Exam is conducted in the January. Result are uh, declared in the February. But from Corona pandemic, the GPAT exam is being conducted late. So this year also, 23rd May is the date of GPAT exam. So it is an online exam of three hours. You will have 125 MCQs. Total marks are 500 marks. For each correct answer, you will be awarded with the four marks. And for each wrong answer, you will be awarded with a minus one mark. That means there is a negative marking 0.25 percent negative marking am i audible you sir am i audible yeah yeah you are audible okay. now we can hear you sir okay okay sir. let's see the cut up marks of previous five years in the 2014-15 it was around 120 marks out of 500 marks in 2016-17 it was a 113 or 113 115 marks respectively in 2018-19, it was a 137-141 mark respectively. In 2020, it was a 163 mark. In 2021, it was a 186 mark. And last year, GPAT 2022, the cutoff marks was a 148. Now, these cutoff marks, whatever I have mentioned over here, now that cutoff marks is they are applicable for general category. If you are belongs to non-reserve category, okay. If you belongs to open category, so these are the cutoff marks. Now. You will, you will ask, sir, I am not belonging to open category. I have some kind of reservation. So, obviously, for reservation or other category, the cutoff marks will be less. Suppose in the last year, it was a 148 cutoff, mark, cutoff marks for general category. Now, if you belongs to OBC, you can decrease the 25 marks. If you belongs to SCST, again, decrease the more 15 marks. So, suppose last year, uh, last year there was a cutoff of 148. 
and if it belongs to esc category so you can expect a cut off of 100 marks 112 marks right so cut off marks these are the cut off marks for a general category if it belongs to reserve category you will decrease the cut off okay now why we have to see this why you have to learn why you have to remember these cut off marks because these cut off marks they will give idea they will give some kind of idea about how many number of questions or how many number of mcqs you have to attempt in the exam normally what happens your 40 or 50 correct answer will qualify you in the exam 40 or 50 correct answer out of 125 it will it, it can easily qualify you in the g5 but provided that your attempt count should be less than 65 suppose that you have attempted 60 question and out of that 60 question your 50 questions are there so what will be your score in the g5 so as you know 50 into 4 200 and uh, you have attempted 60 question that means 10 are wrong so 200 minus 10 190 so 190 is a very good score and you can easily surpass the cutoff marks you can easily pass the cutoff marks and that is a very good score you can easily qualify with that but your accuracy is important here okay so you are 40 or 50 correct answer easily qualifies you the gped exam but your attempt count should be less your attempt count should be less right so so obviously if you want to get good good rank if you are targeting top 10 rank so you have to attempt more questions i will explain that in the upcoming slides okay don't worry now <clears throat> the main part is nothing but the how to start the preparation and what is the syllabus for this exam from the all over india a lot of students they used to ask me this question frequently sir i am in a third year i am in a second year i am in a final year i want to start the preparation for gpad but i am not getting a proper guidance i am not getting a starting point i am not getting a way through it so how i should start the preparation now what is the syllabus for your gpad exam syllabus for gpad exam is nothing but the whole syllabus of your bpa right from first year to last year okay so syllabus for bpa is nothing but the syllabus of syllabus for gpad is nothing but the whole syllabus of your bpa right from first year to last year they can ask anything from any year they can ask anything from any subject they can ask anything from any chapter or they can ask any point from any chapter of any subject right so whole four year syllabus is there right now ideally you have to start the preparation from second year at third year itself okay so suppose you got admission in the b form so first year you can enjoy your b form you can enjoy your b form you can used to with the system in the first year you are new in the college so you have to adapt the conditions of college you have to understand the system you have to get familiar with the teaching staff you have to get familiar with the friends okay so you can see in the first year there is no need to prepare anything you just try to adopt the system in the second year what do you do you have to decide your target okay? when you are in the second year you have to decide your target what are your career goals what is your target where you want to see yourself in the next three four years we have to decide in the second year okay whether you want to go in the research whether you want to go in the academics whether you want to go abroad whether you want to uh, study uh, whether you want to go for higher studies whether you want to go for research so that should be clear in your mind when you are in the second year of itself right so in the first year you just enjoy get used to with the study uh, get used to with the system in the second year you decide your goal what you will do and you have to prepare towards the goal okay in the second year you have to decide goal and you have to walk towards that goal right suppose you have to find out what are your plus points what are your negative points okay so what are your merits what are your demerits what are your advantage what are your disadvantage so once you find your merits and demerits okay in the second year so you have to work on your demerits okay and uh, you have to find what what are the requirements that are important for this particular goal e what aapko ek particular goal achieve karna hai uske liye kaun se skills lag rahe kaun se kaun se merits lag rahe so if you don't have that skill if you don't have that merits you have to nourish yourself you have to uh, shape yourself you have to acquire that skill and 
then in the third year final year you should be very much clear you should be approaching towards the goal okay now we are differing from the subject so what is the syllabus for gpet i have explained you now your syllabus is divided into three parts right so for your understanding purpose i have divided your syllabus in the three parts so first part is the basic subject second part is applied subject third part is other subject so what is the basic subjects so syllabus of your first year and second year known as anatom physiology biochemistry microbiology physical pharmacy pharmacy engineering dispensing pharmacy organic chemistry so this is the syllabus known as the basic syllabus so that's why this pci has given this syllabus in the first year and second year itself okay this is known as the basic syllabus or basic subject now what do you mean by applied syllabus so syllabus of your third year and final year syllabus or subjects of your third year and final year so pharmacology industrial pharmacy medicinal chemistry biopharmaceutics instrumental analysis all these are the applied subject right so these are the syllabus third year final year syllabus now there are certain other subject like herbal drug technology jurisprudence biotechnology quality assurance and research methodology now you have the syllabus in front of you i have divided your syllabus in three parts for your understanding purpose okay basic applied and other now how to, <coughs> now how to start the preparation or which subject you have to choose first okay as i told you this is the one of the most frequently asked question from student side student sides how to start the preparation now <coughs> ideally when you are in the second year you have to decide what you have to do and you have to plan your future okay you have to plan and you have to stick accordingly with that so in the second year itself if you want to have prepare for gpat if you want to prepare for niper if you want to get ms m farm or uh, m tech okay so obviously you have to start preparation in the second year itself or maximum you can start the preparation in third year so because it depends on your uh, it depends on your understanding capacity it depends on your basic concept so you can prepare you can start preparation second year or in a third year okay now in the, suppose that you are in a second year what you have to do to prepare what you have to do when you are in a second year you have to just focus on you have to just clear your concept you have to just revise your syllabus whatever syllabus is there in a first year and second year suppose you are in second year so you cannot study you cannot prepare you cannot uh, understand the third year syllabus and fourth year syllabus so you are in a second year so what you you, you are going to understand so whatever is in, there in a first year and second year so just try to revise that try to clear that in the first second year itself so first year second year you have to clear in the second year itself. now if you are in third year so what you have to do you have to spend four months for basic so if you are in a third year you have to revise all the first year second year in the four months and remaining time for the other syllabus right okay ideally you have to start you have to read from various kind of standard reference books okay so you have to start your preparation you have to study from reference books but if you don't have okay now why you have to understand from basic subject now you have to start your preparation from basic subject but why what is the reason so there is a reason behind this again suppose you want to study pharmacology so pharmacology is based upon three subject so pharmacology is applied subject and it is based upon the anatomy physiology biochemistry and microbiology now if these three subjects are clear to you you can easily understand the pharmacology in the similar way if you want to understand the medicinal chemistry analysis so whole medicinal chemistry and analysis is based upon the chemistry part so if you if your heterocyclic chemistry is clear you can understand the classification of your uh, medicinal chemistry you can understand the Structural activity relationship of medicine chemistry. Okay. Now, if your basic chemistry is clear, you can understand the analysis part very well. Okay. In the similar way, if you want to understand the industrial pharmacy, if you want to understand the biopharmaceuticals, so again you have to be clear about the basic. What are the basic? Pharmaceutical engineering is there. Then your uh, physical pharmacy is there. Then dispensing pharmacy is there. So, if you want to understand the pharmacology, you should be clear about the anthropology, biochemistry, and microbiology. If you want to understand the industrial pharmacy, biopharmaceutics, you should be clear about the pharmaceutical engineering, physical pharmacy, and dispensing pharmacy. If you want to understand the chemist, medicinal chemistry analysis, you should be clear regarding the organic chemistry. Okay. So that's why you have to read basic subject first, and this I will explain with the taking one example. Okay? Now suppose that you are studying one chapter from pharmacology. 
the name of that chapter is nothing but the anti ulcer so anti ulcer drug right so if you want to study that anti ulcer drug right so anti ulcer drugs or you can say anti antacids or you can say anti secretory agents okay so you are studying this anti ulcer drug and if you want to understand important points for gpad and nipper so what are the important points from this chapter for gpad as well as nipper so in the anti ulcer drugs what you have to remember what you have to what uh, what usually usually they ask they used to ask the questions most frequently from this part so what is the most important part from your anti ulcer drug so first classification is very very important you have to remember the classification any means by any means second part is important is nothing but the mechanism of action after that your uses indications contraindications okay ADME absorption distribution metabolism elimination and after that toxicity antidotes so that part is very very important most of the times we used to ask question from this part so out of that also the most important part is nothing but the your classification and again it is a most frequently asked question from all over India to me, sir. How to remember the classification? Because we have a lot of syllabus, we have a lot of chapters. In each chapter, there is a classification, and that classification is also of various type, like pharmacological classification, therapeutic classification, chemical classification, classification according to the generation, classification according to the duration of action. So, how to remember that classification? We have a lot of classification, and I used to say them. There is no need to remember the classification. You can classify the drug by your own. You can classification by your own. You can classify the classification. For that, you, know, you, should know, <coughs> you should know the physiology of particular process. If you know the physiology, if you know the physiology, you will understand the targets. And once you understand the target, each target will comprise one class of drug. So basically, you should understand the physiology of particular process. What is the normal physiology? If you understand the normal physiology, you can understand the agonist, antagonist, and all the drugs. Okay, you can understand the mechanism of action also. So if you know the physiology, suppose that you are studying anti ulcer drug, if you know the physiology of acid secretion in the stomach, what are the different factors which generate the acid in the stomach? So you can easily understand the classification. How I will explain. Now suppose that. So whenever you will see any kind of food item, suppose like uh, as you belongs to West Bengal, suppose you see a rasgulla. So <laughs> what will happen? So there is a watering in your mouth. There is a watering in your mouth, and also there is a increased acid secretion in the GIT. So that is not necessary. Just by seeing rasgulla, you will have watering in the mouth. So for uh, boys, if they say any, if they see any girl, girl, or if any girl miles toward the boy so they start watering in their mouth that is a different thing okay so if you see any kind of food if you see any kind of food item so that site or that stimulus is sent to your brain right so brain will analyze that stimulus and then will signal the stomach to secrete the acid via vagus nerve what is vagus nerve it is the largest nerve supplied to your kitchen area your GID area okay largest nerve which is supplied to your GID area now there was one question from this so the nerve which is supplied to GIT area that is a vagus nerve so what is vagus nerve it is a cholinergic nerve so it can stop acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter so it will be released upon signal and this acetylcholine do <coughs> different things okay so it will stimulate first the gastrin hormone it will stimulate the histaminocytes in the GIT GIT may GIT histaminocytes, they are also known as the enterochromaffin cells. Enterochromaffin cells, GIT histaminocytes, they are known as enterochromaffin cells. So, acetylcholine will stimulate the enterochromaffin cell to release the histamine. First, it will stimulate the gastric. Gastric is a hormone produced by your GIT. Now, this was a question in again in the GPAD. Gastric is a hormone produced by parietal cells. Right? <clears throat> okay. Then again, acetylcholine will also have one more. It will also have direct receptor on the parietal cells, known as the muscular receptor. Okay. Again, whatever food you are seeing, that food is directly stimulating the gastrin hormone. So these two stimulants 
they stimulate the acetylcholine gastrin and this acetylcholine now okay now this acetylcholine has its own receptor on the parietal cells in the parietal cells there is a one pump known as a proton pump so proton pump so what is the function of proton pump proton pump is known as hydrogen potassium ad base pump this is called the proton pump proton pump is a potassium hydrogen ad base pump so what is the function of it you have to understand the basics so what is the function it will make hydrogen ion available this hydrogen ion will be made available by this process. now this hydrogen will combine with the chloride ion to form a cl that is acid right now proton pump is in all in the final step of acid production now who stimulate this proton pump there are different factors first is nothing but the this gastrin gastrin will stimulate the proton pump to release the more acid okay then histamine histamine will also stimulate the proton pump to release more acid by histamine to receptor so there was one question which receptor is found in the git and responsible for the acid formation of the histamine so histamine out of histamine receptor histamine has a different receptor okay? histamine 1 histamine 2 histamine 3 so out of that histamine 2 receptor is present in the parietal cells of git which stimulate the acid formation so this was the question again this uh, acetylcholine will also have its own receptor like muscarinic receptor in the parietal cell which will also stimulate the proton pump so basically what is happening this acetylcholine is stimulating the proton pump and this histamine is stimulating the proton pump this gastrin is stimulating the proton pump and it engages it engages the acid formation so these are the factors like your proton pump is the one factor your acetylcholine is the one factor your histamine is one factor your gastrin is one factor which stimulate the acid formation now there is also counter steam in your body so if there is an excessive formation how to prevent it so there is a role of your prostaglandin so prostaglandin e2 which also has a negative role in the gastric secretion which also has a negative role in the which also negatively or which also suppresses the proton pump so this prostaglandin will decrease the acid formation so it, so it has a negative role it will suppress the proton pump so it will decrease the acid formation right then there is one <coughs> one more hormone known as a somatostatin so somatostatin also has a negative role in the acid formation now you know that now aapko clear hai ki which are the factors which are responsible for the increase in the acid formation now these these are the factors which increase the acid formation now these these are the factors which decrease the acid formation so remember your <coughs> acetylcholine will increase the acid formation the stamine will increase the acid formation and gastrin will increase the acid formation and proton pump will increase the acid formation now these are the four <coughs> four factors or four targets which increases the acid formation now prostaglandin will decrease the acid formation somatostatin will decrease the acid formation these will, these two will decrease the acid formation now you know that these are the factors which increase the acid formation these are the factors which decrease the acid formation now what do you have to do you have to these are the number the target for if you know the physiology you will be able to find out the targets in the <coughs> targets for the drug now each target will comprise one class of drug okay each target will comprise one class of drug but why we have to use this drugs whether see first of all you should understand acid formation in your stomach is a normal thing so agar aapke stomach में एसिड बन एसिड इज जनरेटेड इन योर स्टमक व्हिच इज इन एक्सेस दैट इज अ पैथोलॉजिकल ओके सो नॉर्मली एसिड फॉर्मेशन इज अ नॉर्मल थिंग बट इफ देयर इज एन एक्सेसिव एसिड फॉर्मेशन देयर इज अ पैथोलॉजिकल इफ यू हैव सम काइंड ऑफ इंजरी इन योर स्टमक इन योर जीआईडी इन योर डुओडेनम इफ यू आर हैविंग डीजेनरेशन ऑफ प्रोटेटिव लेयर इन द जीआईडी व्हिच दैट इज नोन एज अ अल्सर सो इफ एनी काइंड ऑफ वुंड एनी काइंड ऑफ लेशन any kind of degeneration of protein layer in the stomach or in the duodenum known as a ulcer right <clears throat> now if that ulcer is in a stomach known as a peptic ulcer if that ulcer is in a duodenum known as duodenal ulcer right so uh, again there was one question in the gpt exam 99% of duodenal ulcers are caused by so that is caused by one infection known as h pylori infection now what are the reasons for ulcer ulcer 
what are the reasons for ulcer so first reason is the injury to hid second reason is nothing but the excessive acid formation third reason is nothing but the irritation of hid by drugs fourth reason is nothing but the bad habits like alcohol and smoking if the reason is nothing but the infection so these are the reasons for your ulcers right ulcer means what it is a degeneration of protective layer or there is a wound in the stomach there is a lesion in the stomach or intestine right that is ulcer now if you are suffering from ulcer if you are suffering from excessive acid formation which is known as acidity or hyperacid so in that condition you have to control the acid formation you have to neutralize the acid present in the stomach okay and that's why we are studying this and the ulcer drug right now how to remember the classification so you know that these are the factors which will stimulate the acid formation these are the factors which will inhibit the acid formation now you have to control the acid suppose that you are suffering from ulcer if ulcer is there in your stomach so what you have to what are the treatment strategies for that ulcer so how you can prevent that ulcer from further growth the so first strategy will be you have to prevent that ulcer from further growth how you can prevent so you have to neutralize the acid because acid kya karega acid will again degenerate your muscular layer as again will degenerate the layer okay will increase the the total length of your ulcer so you have to decrease the acid formation you have to okay first is nothing but you have to neutralize the acid so first target will be neutralize the acid what is acid already formed in the stomach you have to neutralize that by using antacids so first class will be your antacid second major aiding or second major class will be second target is nothing but you can prevent the formation of acid okay you can prevent the formation of acid and that is the anti secretory agents so antacid will neutralize the already formed acid anti secretory agents will prevent the more acid formation right so second reading there is a anti secretory agents now you have neutralized the acid you have prevented the acid formation but what about that ulcer that ulcer is in your GIT. What you have to do? You have to heal that ulcer. So ulcer protective drugs like sucralpine, okay, ulcer protective drug. That is the third. Okay, third main aid. Fourth main aid is nothing but if ulcer is not only because of the hyperacidity, not only because of the irritation of drugs, irritation of GIT by drugs. So ulcer is also because of the infection. So if that is infection, you have to remove that infection, right? How you can remove by using antibiotics? So third aid will be. Anti ulcer antibiotics or anti H four three antibiotics. So all the classification will be lie in these three headings. First will be antacid, second will be antacidity agent, third will be ulcer protective, fourth will be anti H four three antibiotic. So these are the main main body, main four main headings. Now first antacids. So what do you mean by antacid? They will neutralize the acid form or acid which is already formed in the stomach. We will uh, neutralize the acid. Okay. So in that also you have two subclasses. First one is a systemic antacid. Now, why it is known as systemic? Because these kind of antacids they are absorbed in the systemic circulation. Example is nothing but the sodium bicarbonate. So now on this part also they are asked question. Systemic antacid. Example of systemic antacid is the sodium bicarbonate. Now you have to remember the adverse effect of that also, which is very easy. Okay. So how to remember the adverse effect of sodium bicarbonate? So it is very simple thing. Okay. So what is sodium bicarbonate? It is a Basic compound. It has a sodium plus carbonate ion in the cell, so it is a basic compound. If any basic compound goes into your blood, what will it do? It will increase the pH of blood. Now, try to ask question to yourself. What is the normal pH of blood? So it is around seven point four. So if there is increase in the pH of blood, the condition is known as a. It is known as systemic alkalosis. If there is a decrease in the pH of blood, then normal known as systemic acidosis. So this sodium bicarbonate will cause systemic alkalosis. That is the adverse effect. Now on this part also they have already asked question. Now again, sodium bicarbonate is having two components, sodium plus carbonic acid. So obviously it is systemic antacid. It will go into the systemic circulation. So it will increase the sodium ions in your body. So suppose that any patient is suffering from blood pressure, any hypertensive patient is there, and he takes systemic antacid. Say for example, you know. So what is you know? You know is nothing but the antacid. Systemic antacid, sodium bicarbonate. So, if any hypertensive patient takes this, you know, or if you, if any patient asks to your shop to dispense the 
you know and if you discuss without knowing the history of that patient so what will happen the increase the sodium content in the body will cause will cause hypertension more hypertension or the blood pressure of this patient will be increased drastically right so the patient may die right again so that's why this sodium bicarbonate is contraindicated in case of hypertensive patient you have to understand the logically you have to understand you have to think logically you, if your basic is clear you can easily understand the mechanism you can understand the classification you can understand the adverse so another adverse effect of sodium bicarbonate so it will cause a rebound of acid suppose you are suffering from acidity you take you know or you take a sodium bicarbonate for acidity purpose so obviously no doubt sodium bicarbonate will neutralize or you know will neutralize your acid in a 6 second but if you use repeatedly to take repeatedly sodium bicarbonate what will happen so it will neutralize it will neutralize but there is a again negative feedback mechanism over your body so what is negative feedback mechanism it will generate more acid so another adverse effect of sodium bicarbonate it causes the rebound acid rebound acid right so these are the major three adverse effects so it will cause systemic alkalosis it causes rebound of acid it is uh, increases the blood pressure in the hypertensive patient so these are the major adverse effects now minor adverse effects you know very well so all the students they know if we, they if they don't remember anything in the paper they write nausea vomiting and diarrhea right so these three are very common you know very well that so you have to write that again but major adverse effect because nta chipped exam they are going to ask you specific things they are not going to ask you common things again one more adverse effect you just have to think logically so sodium bicarbonate will neutralize the acid now in that neutralization reaction what will happen what will happen there is a formation of salt and water as well as release of carbon dioxide now that release of carbon dioxide will cause discomfort in your stomach will cause flatulence in your stomach so most of the antacids they will have one adverse effect one is a flatulence epigastric pain epigastric distress right so very simple adverse effect is also very simple i am not going to stretch this so very much long so, uh, okay this is a systemic antacid now what is non systemic antacid they are not absorbing the systemic circulation example is nothing but the sodium aluminum hydroxide gel magnesium tricyclic so in that also you should know the adverse effect what is the constipation is the adverse effect of aluminum ion and uh, magnesium ion ka adverse effect hota hai diarrhea so to counteract the adverse effect they are combined together you may find one tablet known as gelasil ambience in that you are non systemic antacid right now again this was the first class antacids in that you have two subclasses systemic and non systemic now second main heading is anti secretory agents now how to remember that we have seen the factors okay so just target one factor so first factor is nothing but the histamine so what is the role of histamine it will increase the acid formation so block that so those factor which increases the acid formation you have to block that those factor which decreases the acid formation we have to support them okay so histamine increases the acid so block that by using histamine to this block that. So what are the examples? All the deans, semitin, rentin, pamodipin, zeptin. These are the examples of histamine two receptor sort of blockers. Okay. So in that also you have to remember what is the specific adverse effect of semitin, because that is no more used. What is the major adverse effect? As semitin has an anti-androgenic effect, it may cause important in the male. It may cause gynecomastia in the female. Oh, sorry, it may cause gynecomastia in the male. It may cause amenorrhea in the female. So you have to remember. Okay. then again what is the most potent drug among the histamine to receptor blocker so that is nothing but the famotidine famotidine is the most potent like what are the uses so most of the antacid or anti secretory agents they will have common uses like uh, your <coughs> like your ulcer duodenal ulcer peptic ulcer like gerd gastro reflux is fatal disease okay then diarrhea vomiting then acidity like or gastric irritation so this uses will be common so in the irritation syndrome like that okay. now next target is nothing but the proton pump so proton pump it mean will increase the acid formation so inhibit that by using <coughs> proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole pantoprazole rabiprazole isomeprazole dexamethasone so in that also you should know what is the most potent drug so remember pantoprazole is the most potent drug and if pantoprazole is not given in the option so what you have to write lansoprazole is the most potent 
So pantoprazole, if it is an option, you just click that. If it is not there, lansoprazole is there. So click that because first most important is the pantoprazole, and after that, lansoprazole. Okay. Right. So all these drugs are a product. I can I can explain a lot of things. I can revise a whole chapter over here, but I think I should uh, compare that. Okay. I should compress that. So proton bomb inhibitor, in that also you should know most important that what are the adverse effects, what are the products, what are the kinetics, okay, which are very, very important for your exam. So on that part, so remember these are the products, proton bomb inhibitors, and what is the active metabolite? So sulfenamide is the active metabolite. So in that part also they are already asked question only. Right? Now proton bomb inhibitor. Now third target kya hai? What is the third target? So two targets are completed, histamine and proton bomb. So third target is never third class so in the anti security first class was histamine to receptor local second class was the proton pump inhibitor third class is nothing but anyone target just fine anyone so <clears throat> for example prostaglandin what will they what will they do they have a negative role in the acid formation they will increase the mucus secretion so you have to support them you have to support them so prostaglandin analogs are used right so <clears throat> misoprostol lansin prost carboprost plexaprost all these are the prostaglandin and log. Now, what is the next target? Somatostatin. So, what will it do? It will also has a negative role in the <coughs> acid formation. So, support that using a somatostatin analog. So, what are the example? Most of the following don't know the example. And GPAC, they are going to ask question on this. Rather, already they ask question on this. So, what is the example of somatostatin? Octrotide is the example of somatostatin. Octrotide. <clears throat> already two, three times they have already asked question. So somatostatin analog. Octrotide. Right? So histamine to receptor over PPI is over somatostatin analog over prostatin analog over. So these are the four classes. Now again, anti secondary agents mean now there is one more class. So one target is remaining, known as a cholinergic system or acetylcholine. So it will increase the acid formation. So block that by using anti-cholinergic drugs, or more specifically by using anti-muscarinic drugs, so muscarinic free receptor blockers. Right. So <clears throat> in that you have propanthalin, pyranzepine, atropine, and all that. Okay. So all these drugs will decrease the acid formation. Okay. So out of that, <clears throat> you should remember what is the use of these anti-secretory agents. So in that. All the proton pump inhibitors, they are a drug of choice in case of NSAID induced ulcer. So, you know that most of the NSAIDs, okay, most of the analgesic antibiotics, they irritate your GID, will produce ulcer. Okay, so they are a drug of choice. PPIs are a drug of choice in case of NSAID induced ulcer. They are a drug of choice in the Jolinger Reason syndrome. They are used in the GERD. They are used in the washing, omitting diarrhea, etc. Okay, so these are the uses. So if you know the physiology, you can understand the targets, and you, once you understand the target, you can classify the target. Okay. Again, first class was antacid, second class was anti secretory agent. Now third class. So if there is an ulcer in your stomach, how you can prevent that from further good by neutralizing the acid, by controlling the acid formation? But what about that ulcer? You have to heal that. You have to clear that. You have to heal that ulcer. So ulcer healing agent, third category, main heading. So in that you are so proud there. So try to ask question to yourself. Already they ask question. Ulcer protective. Example of ulcer protective is sucral bed. So what is the sucral bed? It is a sulfated aluminium salt of sucral. Sulfated aluminium salt of sucral. So that is a sucral bed. So it will mount protective layer on the your uh, ulcer and it will prevent ulcer. So ulcer protective. Now for ulcer is not only because of the hyperacidity, ulcer is not only because of the injury, ulcer is not only because of the drug. Ulcer is not only because of the um, uh, bad habits. So ulcer is also because of the infection. So, most common cause of duodenal ulcer is H. pylori. Now H. pylori means Helicobacter pylori. That is a bacteria. Okay. Now you will, you might have one doubt in your mind. So if, if we are able to digest meat, we are able to digest a lot of things. Even we are able to digest the biryani. And why you are not able to digest that? Helicobacter pylori. So normally most of the infection or no, most of the <clears throat> bacteria they are killed in the acid because your stomach has a acid. So what is the pH of your stomach? One to three. On their part also they already ask question. So 
So one to three is the pH of blood, uh, pH of your stomach. Then in that pH, most of the bacteria will be destroyed, will be killed. Then why this H. pylori will survive in the stomach? And why that H. pylori will cause ulcers? <clears throat> because there is a reason. H. pylori will have one enzyme known as a urease. Urease will break down urea. And what is the breakdown product of urea? Ammonia. So ammonia is the basic. That will utilize the acid formation acid. Uh, and that's why that H. pylori is able to survive in the stomach. Now, how to remove that H. pylori? So you have to use antibiotics like lathromycin, azithromycin, amoxicillin, then uh, tetracycline. So these are the antibiotics against the H. pylori. Tetracyclines, amoxicillin, clarithromycin, right? So in that also antibiotic of choice in case of H. pylori. Uske upar ek question aajuka. Already there was a question. Antibiotic of choice in case of H. pylori. That is nothing but the clarithromycin. Okay. Again, some bismuth compound, bismuth subnitrate also has a anti H. pylori <coughs> action. Okay. Then again, there was a question in last year, uh, GPAT 22. Uh, sorry, 20. Uh, yes, 20. So there was a question triple therapy for H. pylori. So what is a triple therapy? What is a quadruple therapy? Like that. So you have to remember that. So triple means what? Three. So triple therapy will have three drugs. So first drug will be the proton pump inhibitor. Second drug will be <coughs> antibiotic, that is clarithromycin. And third, <coughs> okay, and third drug will be bismuth salt. So that is known as triple therapy. PPI plus bismuth salt plus <coughs> antibiotic. That is a triple therapy. Now what is quadruple therapy? Quadruple therapy, you just have to add one more drug in there. Okay. That is a quadruple therapy. Quadruple therapy means PPIs plus your uh, antibiotic lithromycin plus your bismuth subnitrate plus your ulcer product. It is a quadruple therapy. So this part is on that part they used to ask question. So the similar way, if you want to understand the intestinal pharmacy, if you want to understand the antibacterial part from microbiology, uh, my antibacterial part from pharmacology, you should be clear regarding the Microbiology. If you know the bacteria, if you know the structure of bacteria, if you know the types of organism, if you know how bacteria will multiply, how what is the difference between gram positive and gram negative, how bacterial replication is there, how bacterial DNA replication, how bacterial DNA transcription is there, translation is there. So, what are the different enzymes responsible for the replication, transcription, translation? So, all these are nothing but the targets for antimicrobial. If you know the microbiology well, you can easily understand the mechanism as well as classification of antibacterial. In the similar way, if you want to understand the medicinal chemistry, you should be regarding clear regarding the chemistry part, organic chemistry, heterocyclic chemistry. If you want to understand the and analysis, you should be clear regarding the basic chemistry. So whole spectroscopy, whole chromatography is based upon the basics of chemistry, type of excitation, type of bond, energy required for bond formation, breaking, etc. Likewise, if you want to understand the international pharmacy, you should be clear regarding the <coughs> pharmaceutical engineering and physical pharmacy, right? Suppose you want to understand the formulation problem of suspension and stability of suspension, which is the one chapter from your international pharmacy, suspension. <coughs> so if you want to understand the formulation problem and stability of suspension, you should be clear regarding the colloid chapter in the physical pharmacy. If you know the colloids in the physical pharmacy, what is by lyophilic colloid, lyophilic colloid, DLV, theory, code number, stability of colloids. So whole concept is based. The whole concept is the basis for suspension. So you can easily understand the stability and formulation problem also. So if you want to understand the stability problem, formulation problem of emulsion, so you should be clear regarding one chapter from physical pharmacy. What is that surface tension interfacial phenomenon? So if that chapter is clear. You can understand the formulation problem and instability in the emotion. Okay. Likewise. Am I audible? Audible, Aina sir. <coughs> Am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Now you might have uh, seen this subject and different weightage for the GPAD exam. So your GPAD has a five sections. First section will be chemistry, and which will they are going to ask you chemistry for 38 question. 
152 marks and pharmaceuticals <coughs> pharmaceuticals 38 question 152 marks again and then uh, pharmacology 28 questions pharmacognosy 10 questions and other subjects they are going to ask 11 questions which will cover your 44 marks so total paper will have 500 marks 125 questions that questions will be <coughs> 125 question will be divided chemistry 38 questions physics 38 question pharmacology 28 question <coughs> cognosy 10 question other subject 11 question chemistry means <coughs> all organic chemistry inorganic chemistry medicine chemistry biochemistry analysis physics means all like pharmaceutical engineering physical pharmacy dispensing pharmacy industrial pharmacy and bio pharmacy pharmacology means all like <coughs> anatomy physiology then Pharmacology 1 to 3 and pathology. <coughs> Pharmacognosy and other stuff. Okay, clear. So, a lot of students again they used to ask me, sir, <coughs> pharmacology is very important, I know. And uh, if I only prepare pharmacology, if I only study pharmacology, can I qualify? No doubt you can qualify by chance, but NT has given proper weightage for each and every section. So you have to prepare all the subjects, not only one subject. So no doubt pharmacology is interrelated with the Anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, and microbiology. Sometimes you may qualify with the pharmacology only, but for rank, you should prepare each and every subject. Right now, depend time management for second year, third year students. How to manage the time? <clears throat> Basically, there is no need to prepare GPAT separately. Nowadays, I don't know why people are making so noise about the GPAT. When we were we was in our B farm. At that time, GPAT was the first time conducted, and we was not aware about the GPAT. Before, before that GPAT, there was a gate exam, and it was a very tough exam. So nowadays, a lot of noise is there. Everybody is getting aware about GPAT. Everybody is getting, everybody is knowing what is important, what is not. So that's why a lot of people they are targeting GPAT exam. A lot of people they are qualifying. Uh, now, how to manage the time for second year, third year student? Prepare GPAT exam parallel with your semester exam. You have to prepare parallelly with the semester exam. There is no need. To but if you want to prepare, you can prepare. So, no doubt. But how to prepare? So, you have to study, you have to read from reference book. But what students they are using nowadays? They are using semester books, they are using PCI syllabus books. Like Takro publication, P publication, and other generally publication. But they these books will provide you, these books will provide you the content which is sufficient for to pass your semester exam. But these books will not provide you content which are sufficient, which is important for GPAD and competitive exam. So for GPAD and other competitive exams, you need to go, you need to read reference books. Okay, nowadays uh, students they have lost. They don't need reference book. They, they need only ready-made things. They need a ready-made notes. But these ready-made notes, ready-made things, PCI books, they will help you only for your semester exam. Remember, they will not help you for GPAT and competitive exam and for knowledge. If you want to get knowledge, if you want to qualify the exams, you have to go into the reference book. You have to read reference book. There is no other option. Okay. A lot of people will say a lot of things. But I used to say you have to go in the reference books, standard reference books. Now, what are these books? I will explain in the upcoming slide. Don't worry if uh, time is there. Okay. And now, daily two or three hour studies in a for a GPAD preparation. So, a lot of students, you might have seen a lot of interviews on the YouTube channel uh, that I have studied eight hours, I have studied 10 hours for GPAD, and I have got this. Right. So, all these are the fake. All these are the doctored videos, all these are the manipulated, scripted videos because nobody is actually studying 8 hours and 10 hours. Okay, even IS officers, if they they have been interviewed, they used to say there is no need to study 8 hours, only quality study is important. 3 to 4 hours study, there is enough to qualify the IS exam, and you are not preparing for IS. So, GPAT is very easy exam. So, 2 3 hours study is enough. Okay, but that study should be quality study. You have to wake up in the early morning, 5 to 8 a.m. So ideal time for study is a 5 to 8 a.m. So why that is ideal time? So what happens in the daytime? There is a lot of disturbances. So if you uh, started study at 7 p.m., 
what will happen to so some uh, somebody will on television some program will be there for example kapil sharma so whether he is saying some kind of joke or not so your all mind will be diverted to that show okay some uh, your sister or some your mother or father so their mobile will be there so mobile they will watch any video so nowadays there is a very nowadays there is a one more addiction so what is that addiction so when we was in a college there was a different addictions now nowadays there is a two more additions addictions are there first addiction is nothing but watching the reels on the youtube channel or watching watching the reels on the facebook so that is a very bad addiction and once you addicted the reels so you are lo- losing your times okay so instead of watching reels kacha badam and all that so you have to spend 2 3 hours time with the reference books so that will give you knowledge that will give you that will qualify you deeper okay so ideally in the morning nobody is there to disturb you no horn will be blown no sound sound will be there in from the kitchen no nobody is there to disturb you 5 to 8 am because everybody is sleeping and that is the ideal time you can concentrate on study so read three part in the morning and try to solve the questions or mcqs in the afternoon or in your free time that is the way how to prepare okay? how to manage the time now special tips for exam so first of all you have to read question carefully you have to understand the question first and try to identify these kind of words like not except or even absent all because if these kind of word not except or even absent all they are present in the question they can change your answer totally so you have to read question carefully you have to understand the question first what is the expectation of examiner from that question you have to understand it and once you understand that part the probability of getting your answer correct will increase now you have to decide according to your study according to your hard work according to your dedication right so you have three targets in front of you first one one two three so first target if you just want to qualify the gpet exam okay like first uh, like uh, suppose there is one classroom and in the classroom few first bench students are there few middle bench students are there two last bench students okay? so those who just want to qualify for example like first benchers so first benchers they just want to qualify they don't need any rankers so they don't need any rank so they have just target to 60 or 65 questions so try to solve easy questions correctly you can easily find 50 or 60 questions from out of 125 and target those questions with 100% accuracy if you solve 50 or 60 questions with 100% accuracy you can qualify so first benchers just they just want to qualify the exam now middle benchers they want to qualify the exam with very good rank like if you want to get a good rank you can solve up to 80 questions again maintain 90% accuracy now last benches they want to qualify the exam with top 10 rank so top 25 rankers they can solve up to 90 to 100 questions again you have to maintain the 90% accuracy you can easily get all the rank so after all you need only 80 questions correct so if your 80 questions are correct you are going to get all the rank 1 right so 80 means 80 into 4 20 20 marks are the marks for top only direct one word okay and do not try to solve complicated problems which involves complicated calculations unless you have practiced it well before exam so they are not only going to ask you the theoretical part they are going to ask you some calculation problem and suppose they ask you problems like a child dose calculation allegation method proof spirit isochronicity then <coughs> displacement value this kind of calculation they are easy you can manage using paper and pen but suppose they have asked you to calculate the clearance, volume of distribution, rate of reaction. So you need a support of block table. NTA is not going to provide you any kind of block table. NTA is not going to allow any kind of calculator. So how you can manage? So if you don't have practice, leave that problem. If you have practice, obviously you can solve. Right? So how to study MCQs? I'm not going to explain all the MCQs because it will take a lot of time. Usually to explain these MCQs, I used to take whole day. So I will just take one example. I will explain you how to study the MCQs and that's it. So how to study the MCQs? A lot of uh, noise is there in YouTube. A lot of garbage is there on YouTube. So if you, <laughs> you used to say, if you want to qualify the GPT exam, you have to solve 200 MCQs. If you want to qualify the exam, you have to solve 100 MCQs. But why? Actually, there is no need to solve MCQs, 100 MCQs, 200 MCQs. You just solve 
five MCQs per day. That is more than enough. But the way of that solving of MCQs should be proper. How to solve the that questions? I will explain. Suppose that there is one question in front of you, which anti-inflammatory drug is a selective oxygen? Your options are astomina, penicillin, slide, diclofenac, silicosis, never matter. Now, what you used to do? What is your practice? You used to read the question. Use if you know the answer, it's okay. You used to move next question. Move to next question. अगर आपको क्वेश्चन मालूम है, क्वेश्चन का आंसर मालूम है, तो आप नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन करो और जाते हो। ओके? If you don't know the question, answer. If you don't know the answer, you used to see the answer and then you used to move. But that is the wrong practice. What is the correct practice? The correct practice is nothing but the you have to recall each and every single information regarding all option. So what is the astomina pain? Try to understand. This is first one. What is the chemical class? Paramonic class. What is the mechanism? It is a selective oxygen between the brain. What is the adverse effect? Give it oxygen. When there is adverse effect, keep it in the small beyond six gram per day. Okay. And why there is toxicity? Because there is generation of active metal. Life. What is the reactive metal? Life? You know, still para adverse effect is not imminent. That is the reactive metal. Life. Again, if there is toxicity, what is the antidote? So you know, still system. That is known as the antidote for the asthma. So if you know, still system is not available, then what is next? Methionine. Okay. What is the use of paracetamol? Analgesic, anti-inflammatory, antibiotic. It's wrong. It is only analgesic and anti-biotic. It has a very weak anti-inflammatory. What is the reason? You have to recall. So, just by studying one question, you can revise your whole chapter. You have to re. re okay. So, whatever information I have told you about the paracetamol, so in on every single point, they are already asked question. So, it is known as paracetamol. It is a paramedical derivative. Mechanism kya hai? Selective cost three in between the brain. Recently, in G but uh, sorry, in the drug inspector 2022, Assam state, there was a question about the mechanism of action of parasol. Selective cost three in between the brain. Now you know that there are three terms, cost one, cost two, cost three. You have to recall what is cost one, cost one, cost two, cost three. So on that part, we already asked question. What is the role of cost one? What is the role of cost two? What is the role of cost three? Which one is physiological, which is pathological, which one is a which one has housekeeping function, which is having involved in the tissue necrosis, tissue repair. You have to recall that. Okay. Then you have to recall about the new slide. What is the new slide? So again, it is an ethylene acid derivative, analgesic, antibiotic, anti inflammatory. It is a preferential COX2 inhibitor. So there was a question in last year, GPAC 2022, preferential COX2 inhibitor. So the new slide is preferential COX2 inhibitor, then diclofenac, acyclofenac, then your nap, uh, your pilot's camp is a preferential box So, abhi aap, so once you know what is meant by preferential box try to ask question to yourself. Go in the books, read what is preferential box <coughs> What are the examples? Read the classification, read the mechanism. So, just by studying one question, you can revise whole chapter. And if there are different options, you can revise different chapters. Okay. So, like that. What is the adverse effect? Terminant hepatoxidy. Now it is no more used. Why it is no more used? Because of that terminant hepatoxidy in the children. Read about the diclofenac. So aralastic acid derivative, analgesic anti inflammatory antibiotic. It causes the hyperacidity. It is from GID. Right? So you have to remember each and every. So coxips are known as selective post inhibitor. They are very beautiful, promising anti inflammatory agents and they are equivalent as that of morphine but most of them are no use why what is the reason most of them will cause adversity to the heart some of them will cause arrhythmia some of them will cause myocardial infection that's why one decoxy causes the toxic depots this is the proportion one there was a question on this so nabumetone so you have to read each and everything about all options so in this way if you solve only five percent that is more than enough for any kind of exercise, not only for children. In the similar way, you have to read. I am not going to ask, uh, I am not going to take this uh, more questions. So I will skip this. Okay, but uh, from last recent few years, they have started question, asking questions like this. So they will give you a structure and they will ask you to identify the structure of drug. So in that case, there are two ways to solve such kind of question. First is nothing but you just have to target nitrocyclic ring. You just have to identify which it is at least go into with the option, you will be able to find the answer most of the time. But if you don't know, you should be sure. Okay, 
So first way is nothing but the you can guess, and second way is nothing but the you must be sure. Sure, you know, you should know the ring present in the all options. That is sure. So I'm not going to take this uh, much question because it will take time. Again, so if you just want to cover your at least 70 question in the very limited time, you want to cover 60, 70 question in the remaining time, 10 days, 15 days. So what you have to read charts, table summary, definitions, values, laws, theory, code content from every <laughs> subjects from respective reference book. So every reference book you have to take, you have to pick out the charts, table summary, definitions, laws, values. Board content and you will believe me, you can cover at least 50 60 questions in the, any exam. Right. <clears throat> now, GP and books available in the market. You might know what are the GP and books available in the market. So, these are the GP and books available in the market. Ideally, you have to read from reference books and at the end of your studies, at the for example, say for two months before the exam, one month before the exam. So what you need, you need to revise the syllabus. So these books will help you to revise the syllabus. So first two books are written by me only. Fundamentals of GPAD, GPAD Character Actual, these are the two mine. And GPAD Companion is there by Inandar Madam. PSN GPAD Guide is there by Umang Shah sir. PUG Character is there by Pushpandra Kumar sir. Umad Ali Guide is also. So these guides will help you. In the last, most of the students, they used to do what? They used to call me, they used to ask me about the book. Sir, I want to start preparation from your book. And I used to say there is no need to start the preparation from my book. You have to start your preparation from the book. But at the end of the at the last phase of your preparation, you can read books. Definitely, these books are going to help you. So you can expect around 50 to 60 questions from this single book. Fundamentals of GPA. And from the last three years, consistently 50 to 60 questions they are covered in the GPA diagram just by reading this book. So I'm not here for marketing purpose, so I'm not going to talk more on this. So you can WhatsApp me on this number. I have more than 200 WhatsApp groups where I used to uh, used to share daily questions, daily YouTube, free videos, free content. Okay. Then you can also connect me on this social media platform. We have very much promising results. I'm not here for marketing. So we have very much promising results, and you can connect me on this social media platform. You can download the application. For free testings. Okay. Now this is only one part. This is one is a part for the repeat question. So if, uh, if you have time, if time is there, I can take more. So sir, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. I can take more. Okay. Tell me the time limit at up to which I can take. Sir, tell me the time limit up to which I can take. And if anybody has doubt, they can ask in the comment box. We will finish the season within 11.30. 11.30. Okay. Okay. So, if okay. anybody has doubt, uh, Dear participants, uh, if anyone having any queries uh, regarding GPAT, NIPER, any entrance examinations, uh, you can ask the sir. Sir is supposed to giving the answer. Okay. Because Anybody having any concern? You may put it in the chat box. Well. GPAD is a that kind of thing that you cannot cover in a one hour, two hours. GPAD is a very big subject and it will take a lot of time. So normally I used to take for whole day, two days, three days. To explain how to prepare GPAD sniper only. Okay. So it will take around one day, two days. Most of the people they used to take only one hour lecture in the G, uh, preparation of GPAD. But what I don't know what they are covering in the one hour because I'm not able to cover in the three, four hours. I'm not able to cover in the five, six hours about the GPAD diagram. But I don't know how they cover in one hour. So it is not a subject that uh, anyone can cover in the one hour. It will take a lot of time. Okay. Again, for the uh, final year students, okay. I have a lot of things I can uh, explain this this slide uh, for at least three four hours. Okay, or, but you just have to understand what are the important topics. So this video is available 
on my youtube channel you can go and watch these are the topics which are important they are going to ask you such uh, 10 10 or 15 questions you have to read from the, these books these are the important topics from this pharmaceutical engineering you have to read from this book okay so this uh, is available on my youtube channel you can go and watch but for final year student i would like to say something Final year students, if they want to, if they are not prepared a GPAD and they want to qualify a GPAD in a remaining time, so how they can cover at least 60 70 questions for the upcoming exam in a very short period? So, 14, 14 golden points to read to qualify GPAD 2020 First point is nothing but you have to read Charles Stable summary definitions. MCQ is given in these two books books, okay, physical pharmacy by Sibir Supramanian and pharmaceutical engineering. Please mute yourself. Somebody is okay. Please mute yourself. Hello, sir. Please, yes. Hello. Yes. Ah, uh, sir. Actually, student has supposed to ask uh, sometimes that uh, when a GPAT like examination having uh, negative marks, right? Yes. So how they attend actually to avoid the negative marking okay. as well as to uh, got the cutoffs, huh? Okay. Uh, that are average of cutoffs. How they attend? How okay. much they attend? To to avoid the negative marking, what you have to you have to solve those questions in which you are very much sure. Suppose that you are sure in a fifty questions, so try to solve those questions with hundred percent accuracy. Fifty questions, okay? Then you can take a risk of ten or fifteen questions, maximum ten questions. So that's how you can decrease the negative score. Okay. If you don't know the answer, see, you are going to read familiar words. So in the questions, you are going to have words which are familiar to you, but you don't know the answer exactly. So if you have confusion, just leave that. Okay. So in you have to solve those questions in which you are 200 percent sure. Suppose that you are solved 15 questions, 50 questions. And you are damn sure that 50 questions are correct, then you want to take a risk of 10 questions. But don't take a risk of too much. Okay. So you can cover five to seven questions just by reading charts separate from these two books. Again, eight to ten questions just by reading these two books, charts tables. Again, just by reading charts table, you can cover three to four questions. Then just by reading charts table, five to seven questions. So again, four to five questions on these two books. Cover five to seven questions just by reading charts table definition paste. Okay. Taste and uh stereochemistry from these books, five to seven questions. Three to four questions just by reading these charts table and important points from these books. Again, seven to ten questions just by studying these review books. Same thing you have to do from these two books, three to five questions. Same thing from these two books, you can do three questions. Same thing from these books, you can cover at least three to five books, three to four questions. Any one book, okay? And uh, five to seven questions from previous year. You can expect at least 15 questions, but uh, five to seven questions will be sure from previous papers. Okay? If you don't want to read above anything, you have to read this book. Okay? And uh, you can WhatsApp me on this number. Now, if anybody has doubts, they can ask in the comment box. I will explain your doubts. And will conclude. Uh, we are participants. Did you having any queries? We are participants. If you have any queries, please put your uh, questions into the chat box. Sadi is supposed to waiting to answer you. Uh, I think uh, we are uh, having a long period of time, that is why uh, they are not responding. So, thank you, thank you, Mr. Sochin Jadav, sir, for the wonderful informative session. Hopefully, student will have acquired a lot for enriching their knowledge for the preparation of GPAT like entrance examinations, as well as choose the better career after graduation okay thank you sir because so sir, now uh -huh. yes sir it is not a uh, it is not a it is not a subject 
uh, that anyone can cover in a one lecture or one hour or one or two hour so it will exactly, take a lot of time so if Lord. students are interested we can have one more session session of uh -huh. one day and uh, you want i can take a whole day i will explain and each and every single doubt of jpat nipo and all that so i have and one of, one more things dear participants uh, mr sochin jadav sir also running a jpat coaching academy that is named fundamental pharmacy and he is uh, giving his um, experience sharing his experience uh, for cracking the jpat for a long period of time uh, if you having any uh, queries if you having any uh, uh, regarding any questions you can uh, uh, personally message to sochin sir okay sir is uh, really sir is too much helpful okay so i think uh, now i would uh, like to request our principal sir uh, principal madam to say a few words about this session madam can you hear me hello hello madam i think few questions are in chat box sir i will explain Uh, few questions are in chat box. If we find that two options are likely to be answered but cannot sorted me in the GPAT, this situation, what can we do? Okay. So if you think, yeah. if you think two options are, if you are thinking two options are correct, and we how you get got a confusion in two option. So in that situation, how to deal that? Okay. So just try to read two three times questions and try to think. You will get clarity. Okay, so if you get a confusion, try to get clarity about the question. So automatically you will get a correct answer. Okay, but uh, I don't believe a lot of people they used to say most of the times A will be correct, B will be correct. So that depends on the probability. So that is I don't think that. Okay, but if you have a confusion in the two option, just read the question carefully, and if there is a except all option, so such kind of words they. clear your answer okay so so there is some difference in two options there is some some kind of difference in two options like difference in the adverse reaction difference in the mechanism difference in the specific uses difference in the kinetics so you just have to try so both if you are getting both the options from same category so just think about the kinetics so which is the longer acting which is short acting which has a some plus point which has a some negative point So you will get a clarity about the answer. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable answer. So uh, now we are in the uh, end of this session. Uh, so now I would like to request our academic convener as well as the moderator of this webinar session, Professor Samodip Singh Roy, to give the vote of thanks and uh, end of this session. Sir, Professor Samadhi Singh, or I, can you hear me? Yes, 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 sir. Thank you so much. So, first of all, I would like to say good morning, like uh, over again to all of you. Uh, it gives me immense pleasure to deliver a vote of thanks to all the participants present out here in this webinar, and I would like to thank Mr. Shachin Yadav, sir, for sharing such an inspirational thoughts among the students. thank you so much sir again and finally i would like to thank our beloved staff member students and other participant okay thank sir. you so much make this program wonderful thank you so much sachin sir it was nice talking with you and uh, thank you for uh, like sharing your things with us thank you so much once again sir lastly i am grateful to our honorable principal dr suparna ganguli madam nilanjana adhikari sir Samadip Singh sir and all the staff member, all the respected dignitaries for arranging this kind of wonderful session. Thank you very much, sir. And I hope similar cooperation from your side in the future. Yes, okay, sir. Thank you so query. much. Thank you. There is one query, sir. Can we, can we, can we, can you guide for me some tricks to solve the question which cannot define define properly? or options is understanding properly so tricks tricks uh, see tricks most of time 
I don't believe on the tricks because if you have cleared your concept, there is no need of any trick. Yes. So that depends on the question. If you have question in front of you, then only you can apply some kind of trick. If there is no question in front of you, how can I, how can I say any trick? Mm -hmm. So if question is there in front of you, I can say this is a trick. Okay. So, but I would like to say one thing here. So they have started questions like uh, assertion, assertion and reason. So most of the times in the assertion and reason, I have found that uh, the correct answer is uh, both statement are correct and R is the correct reason for it. So assertion is correct and correct reason for assertion. So that is the most of the time that answer. Yeah, SI, but it is not a case always. Always you cannot rely on that. So you need to clear your concept. If you have concept clear, then obviously you can solve any kind of questions. So I don't believe in the tricks much of times because if your study, basic study is clear, there is no need of any kind of tricks. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you once again, sir. And you, will, you, can, the information. You, can, you can contact me on my WhatsApp number. Yeah, 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 sure, sir. Sure. Anytime, sir. If any kind of deal, yeah. is and there, uh, I'll me. let you know, like, uh, I'll share information with all, all of our students. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share your information with all of our students, right, sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. Sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for our decision. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Should I leave? Uh, should I leave? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. I think Madam is also there. Madam must be busy doing something, like, or she can't hear, hear us. I think due to network issues. Network is issues. Yeah. It's, 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 it's fine. It's okay, fine, it's sir. okay. It's fine, sir. It's fine. It's fine, sir. You may leave, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. We'll communicate thank later, you. sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Baki jara ache student ra shobai akak kore left korte pare. Ha ha ha. Mota moti bhalo laglo. Ha ha. Bhalo laglo and finally most of all like uh, we gonna like uh, send you a link. Through your emails, so jekhane jara jara participant chilo, they can have your like. Tomar ki bolte otake? Certificate. Certificate. Yeah. They can take their certificates from the link. Thik hai jota ki jukho nere modhi pata no hobe, so you can avail your certificates from the link. Jara 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 participant chilo tadher kei dewa hobe shuru mat. Okay. Thik hai chhe. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Achha, ami request korchi. Haan, ami request korchi. Uh, Amader jini achen technical teammate tarok theke jini achen. Bijoy Babu, unake bolchi session ta end korbar jonno. Ami Bijoy Babu ke onurot korchi session ta end korar jonno. Bijoy Babu, shunte bachchen? Ah, okay, 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 okay. Thank you, thank you.